and uh, a Bernice Dome, Newell uh, Bringhurst, I'm Dick Eckhoff, Mike Watson, and uh, Michael Carty at the end there. I'm sorry, Earl was standing over here before he moved down to the end there. That <laughs> Earl man down at the end. I'm sorry, Earl. Okay, we'd like to welcome you all here tonight. Uh, redistricting is a pretty important item. It uh, gives people the chance to be heard, to get their voices out, for it to give people a chance for their votes to count. We're, this is the second of three meetings. The third one will be tomorrow night in Porterville. And these meetings are to discuss criteria, not the boundaries themselves, but the criteria that will be used to make those boundaries. Your input will be used by the committee to develop recommendations to the Board of Supervisors. The Board has the final say. They establish the committee, and when we come in with our recommendation, they will decide what those crit which criteria to use, if they will take our recommendation or not. Hopefully they will, because our recommendation is going to be based on what we gather from the people at these meetings. After they establish criteria, there will be a second round of meetings, which will discuss the actual boundaries. We'll have one meeting in each district at that time. Start the hearing here in just a moment. This is a public hearing to receive input from the residents of Tulare County regarding the criteria to be used to determine new district lines in Tulare County. At this time, Comments are to be restricted to the subject of the hearing. The committee is not prepared to take testimony at this time on the existing or proposed boundary locations. This will be discussed at the second series of meetings to be held in the districts. It is not appropriate for this committee to receive comments on any other county business. Although committee members may ask the speakers questions to clarify their statements, we are not prepared at this time to discuss or to act on any matters presented here. To give as many people as possible an opportunity to address this committee, please restrict your comments to the subject and be as brief as possible. All comments are being recorded and at the conclusion of all three outreach meetings, the committee will review all public comments and ultimately make a recommendation to the board on which criteria should be used. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, all persons addressing the committee will be limited to a maximum of three minutes, with a total of 90 minutes allotted for the public hearing. Direct all comments to the chair. Please wait to be recognized before speaking and do not interrupt other speakers. We ask that you state your name and address for the record. Ask at this time, please turn off all pagers and cell phones or place in a silent vote. And with that, we'll open the public hearing. And we don't have a list of people who have requested to speak, or do we hear it come today? Okay, we'll start out with people who have signed up to speak. Okay, this is why we have committees, not individuals, so we make sure we get everything done. Yeah. We also have agendas about reading what's going on. Okay, PowerPoint starts out with in focus. Okay, as stated, this is a meeting of the Advisory Committee 2011. County Tulare and redistricting. <coughs> I want to thank everybody for the time, taking the time to come in and meet with this committee. As I said, it is extremely important. And we are looking forward to the comments we get from you. As I said before, uh, I want to hear everybody's comments. Everybody's comment is important. Yeah. Written comments may also be submitted here tonight on the website in person at the Board of Chambers in Visalia, or by mail. And any written comments will be added to the website. Okay. Jumped ahead of me, but uh, I guess it's turning in the right direction. 
purpose and goals is to learn what issues were previously considered, to learn from you, from you which issues should be considered. You're the people who are representing, you're the people who are going to be voting, you're the people who should decide where these boundaries are and why they should be selected where they, put where they are. And to comply with those recommendations to the greatest extent possible. Phase one, which is what we're in now, selection of criteria. Review the existing criteria, receive public comments on the three dates and locations listed, then gather together, review those public comments that we've received, and finally make recommendations to the board by mid-May. Phase two is when we actually draw the lines, or set up the recommendations of those lines. We use the adopted criteria, which will be uh, adopted by the board, We'll host five outreach meetings during June to review alternatives on these boundaries. Review and revise the boundary alternative, and then finally, using the information, using the criteria we've established here, what the board has established, and again, the information that we gather from these five outreach meetings to make recommendations to the board of supervisors on the actual boundaries. U.S. Census information is available. So Lurie County had 442,179 residents in the 2010 count. That's 88,436 per district, an increase of 20.2% over 2000. Current districts had 73,604 in the 2000 census. And you can see the difference there, disparity in the growth. Cities have grown 32%, while rural areas have grown only 1.5%. I think changes will most likely be needed. In addition to the population count from the U.S. Census, data will be available to distinguish the population by voting age and ethnicity. The equality of the numbers in the district and Title 42 are the items that we are required to follow. In addition, the criteria that we develop through these meetings will be the balance. This database uh, will be available in mid-May, and then additional outreach meetings, as we said, will be established to help determine where the line should be drawn. As I said, districts must have equal populations as much as possible, as little variance as possible. And as the county is really asking or looking for much tighter variation than the courts may be willing to allow. Compliance with the Federal Voting, Voting Rights Act. We cannot design districts to dilute the voting power of a minority population. And districts should be designed to reflect the ethnic makeup of the voting age population. Optional criteria can be such things as topography, mountain barriers, rivers, and so on, uh, geography, other jurisdictions, city limits, community boundaries, water school districts, and so on. Um, one thing that gets real difficult for the voting people, the voting uh, office, is that they have to have a separate ballot that represents each area and sometimes with these overlapping districts, and in order to get one ballot that covers everybody in that voting area, you may only have two or three ballots. So uh, if we can ease things up for them without affecting the other requirements, that might be a good thing. Continuity, compactness. Uh, again, for instance, Cutler Rossi, Lindsay Strathmore, and so on. We want to increase certain groups of interest. Community of interest. Agricultural versus industrial, water sources, flood areas, predominantly urban versus rural, proximity to federal or state land, age demographics, anything that creates a common group. Chevy fans here have heard that also there. Avoid dividing cities where possible. Protect the integrity of rural towns and communities. We want to try to avoid where we split a town up or a community up because it, it we, they've got a common interest, there's no question, and we'd like to keep that common interest represented as such. Uh, facilitate access of constituents to their supervisors. We want to keep them as close as possible and avoid splitting election precincts where possible. Funding for contact information, redistricting website, uh, you can go to it direct there, you can go through it to the, through the Delaware County website. Uh, board chambers, redistricting staff, uh, 
uh, contact Carol Feigling, uh, there's her email address and phone number, uh, Jeff Forbes, same there. And that information is on these handouts that we sit out here around here tonight. So if you have any information that you want to send in to them, you don't think you've explained yourself fully here tonight, you come up with something you didn't think of here tonight, another idea, you hear something from somebody else, send it on in to us. Uh, give other people the information so that they can send their comments in. Like I said, we want to hear as much as we can, as many people as we can, so that we make this thing work for everybody. Okay, with that, let's go into the public hearing. Uh, the first person who uh, asked to speak is Jesus Gaboa. We have three minutes per person. And if we everybody gets through and we have time later on, we can continue. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Jesus Gamboa. I'm, uh, uh, I work at Pro Inc. I'm the Chief Operating Officer there, 1830 North End of Boulevard. Okay. I I, uh, I reviewed some of the information and I uh, you know, have some observations more than anything. So again, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the work that you're, you're doing and the work you're going to do. I think it's uh, very important in the long-term uh, well-being of our community. I think the first observation I, I made in reviewing some of the maps is that they were hard to follow. You know, they, they, uh, they, they, they referred to avenues and roads. I think that you know, for the lay person, it'd be good to have the, the, you know, the, common, the common street names so we can reference them. I, mean, I, I don't know. I've been here 32 years, but I don't know some of these places by, by roads and avenues. So, you know, in the future, you know, any, any reference to maps would, would be helpful to the, to, to the public if you could help them put in real names on it. Uh, another observation I would make is that, uh, you know, I know we want to make sure we, pre we present the best plan, and I know that I say the Unified has, has been involved in the district. So I, I would suggest and recommend that perhaps you take a look at their processes and how they approach their making of their districts and see if there's anything that we can learn. We can learn from, from their approach and their strategy that might, that might be helpful as we, as we develop districts for the, for the county. I noticed too that, that three out of five uh, supervisors have a piece, a piece of Isalia. And I think we're talking, you know, when you talk about numbers, you know, there's probably enough to make up the, for the, you know, the uh, equity point, the fairness point, the balance. You know, we're going to have to try to figure out how to maybe distribute 30,000 30, people throughout the various uh, districts. So, I, you know, in that case, there's a lot of ways to approach it, but one observation I would make is to, is to just uh, maybe add. Uh, 10,000 10, people to those districts that, that touch by Sadia in that way and make sure that you know if, if we do that we consider that that uh, we distribute the population the, the ratio of uh, Hispanics, whites, and blacks and Asians you know proportionally to the population that they make up in the city in the city of Sadia and also that uh, you know in trying to come up with the 30,000 uh, additional people that we have to uh, that we have to kind of uh, distribute that uh, I think I think it said that, but to make to make that distribution continuous, you know, rather than to break it up, you know, a little bit over here and a little bit over there, but to make it continuous, continuous, because I think that to to the to the primary district, I think that that would that would give us better representation, uh, you know, and don't don't uh, don't shop it up, you know, I, I would rather have two strong by state representatives than than three than three partials. Uh, Whatever, whatever we decide, I think that we should uh, demarcate boundaries. Demarcate boundaries with hard lines. You know, rather than going into neighborhoods and you know, uh, demarcate boundaries by hard lines, meaning using Lover's Lane, using using uh, using Caldwell, using Six to Three, using using uh, uh, Red Maddox and Reagan and, and 198 and 99, using the hard lines that demarcate the boundary rather than getting into into neighborhoods. Uh, when doing districts, uh, I think we need to, uh, you know, a, another way to look at it perhaps is uh, instead of looking at it based on population, let's see what the district would look like based on registered voters. You know, I mean, we may learn something from that analysis, maybe not, but I think the more the more way we look at something, the more we may learn on something. And, and also, I would encourage us to look at 
uh, various various urban rural combinations. You know, uh, uh, right now we have North Visalia, you know, in, in, in the fourth district and part of West Visalia, but there's probably other combinations that we can look at, and I would encourage us to look at as many rural or urban combinations that, as possible. You know, I, I would recommend that North Visalia be kept in Visalia. You know, I think uh, uh, along with Birdland and North, and, and North Visalia, uh, they have a long history in Visalia. There's a lot of new neighborhoods around Visalia that are new, and, and perhaps we need to take a look at including some of the newer neighborhoods, you know, into other districts and leave Visalia intact. You know, but, but, but North Visalia has, has struggled immensely in the last uh, 50 years to try to be part of Visalia, and I think that, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, it would do it a dishonor to, to put it to put it with another another district. Uh, no limits or options to three. You know, I think uh, you know, present as many as possible. You know, let's let's think outside the box and uh, you know, give give the board as many options as we can and let them make the uh, make the tough decision. Avoid gerrymandering. In, in the end, it's not you know, it's not what is best for the incumbents. It's about what makes sense and is fair what serves the area of the district the best. Remember, we will be making decisions that, we'll live, that we will live with for the next 10 years, and we all know that the demographics are changing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next I have Leslie Cavilla. Representing the uh, Visalia City Council, and I want to echo uh, Jesus's comments. So we sincerely appreciate the time and effort that you're putting into this, and the opportunity to comment tonight. Um, I'm making these comments on behalf of the City of Visalia City Council. Um, the council would like to recommend four specific um, criteria that, for your consideration as you draw the new boundaries. Um, one of those would be that city and or school district boundaries be used to establish district lines whenever possible. Using established boundaries such as city limits or urban boundaries can lead to more equitable representation, less confusion among voters, and sometimes simplify the election process. Haile Wallace, the chief deputy uh, treasurer and tax collector who oversees the Tulare County Election Division has recommended to the advisory committee that school districts not be split in order to simplify the election process and we concur with her recommendation. While the size of Visalia will necess necessitate that the school district be divided into more than one supervisorial district, it would be appropriate to consider using school district trustee boundaries, which are due to be finalized in Visalia later this month, for consistency. It would also seem prudent to use city boundaries, such as urban boundaries or city limits, if the larger school district boundaries are not appropriate to fit the other criteria. Um, another recommendation would be that this, no city or community, community be divided into more than two districts. While we recognize that Visalia will have to be split into more than one district, splitting it into more does not seem consistent with the suggested state criteria that recommends considering geography, cohesiveness, integrity, compactness of territory, and communities of interest. In the 2002 Advisory Committee criteria recommendations, the number one criteria was to avoid splitting cities whenever possible. However, Visalia was split into three districts, and a very odd dip was included in the fourth district to include a very small portion at that time of northern Visalia. This slicing and dicing of a single community does not seem consistent with the state guidelines. Um, and it, this is especially true since Visalia was the only city to be split at all in the county. Um, uh, the third criteria would be that sh uh, shared services or, and or infrastructure be considered as cohesiveness and community of interest criteria. Communities or cities that share infrastructure such as wastewater treatment facilities or shared services such as transit, water provider, or solid waste providers would tend to have more in common than communities that do not have such links. And we believe these should be considered when the districts are drawn. Um, finally, we encourage you to have the deviation between the largest and smallest district population not to exceed 2%. The law requires that the population be as equal as possible. While this is somewhat vague, it is recognized that the variation of up to 10% uh, is allowed uh, in order to avoid judicial review. However, if the district starts with a very large variation, growth over in the ensuing 10 years can widen that gap. 
requiring a 2% or less variation is not unusual. In fact, in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, both of which also have large rural districts, the deviation expectation is less than 1%. Um, as figures that you've been provided have indicated, the percentage gap between the smallest and largest district in 2002 was nearly 8%. Over time, that gap has grown and now is more than 15%. Um, so we would encourage something that would certainly take into account the expected larger growth in urban areas. And we will be submitting written comments as well. Thank you for your time. Oh, I'm sorry, I had one other comment, and that was we would encourage you also to look at number of registered voters that are in each district. Um, if you look by Celia, in some instances, represents almost twice the number of um, uh, voters, and that, again, seems somewhat out of line. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Morris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Glenn Morris, by State of Chamber of Commerce, 220 North Santa Fe, and by uh, Again, I want to commend the Commission uh, the, the Board of Supervisors for reaching out for public comment uh, and appreciate the work that you all are doing to um, serve on their behalf and to do that work. Uh, many of the ideas that we're going to share today would be the same as, as those that were endorsed by our City Council, but, but I think they bear repeating. Um, we, we feel it important that communities be kept together as much as possible. And while it's obvious that the city of Visalia, or perhaps more importantly, the urban area represented by Visalia, will be required to, to, to be divided into at least two, uh, we would oppose anything that would divide it into more than two uh, districts. We think that slicing corners or edges of the community simply to disperse um, numbers to fill districts is not in the best interest. Uh, of the urban residents, nor of the uh, rural residents that make up the remaining districts. So we would encourage that the, the, the communities be kept in no more than two where they must be divided. We also think it's important to look not just at existing city limits, but rather urban development boundaries to take into account uh, potential future annexations or community growth that will likely occur over a 10-year period period that you're looking at uh, these districts remaining intact. And so planning not just for today, but for what those districts might look like uh, at, at you know, the end of their life cycle as well. Uh, we do think that using the district boundaries being developed by the school district uh, as potential dividing lines within the uh, Visalia uh, boundaries makes sense. That, that will allow, again, communities to be represented in, in the same cohesive manner. It should simplify um, ballot development issues uh, and it should make things simpler for residents to know that um, if they share a school board member, they likely would share a supervisor as well. Uh, so we would, we would encourage you to use the work done by that committee, um, which I, again, as uh, Ms. Cavillia said, it should be adopted by the school board uh, well within your time frame and, and be available for use. Uh, and, and then the third area, perhaps the only area that we would differ slightly with the City Council, is we think it might be advantageous to undersize the urban districts initially more than perhaps the 2% was suggested. Uh, you, you had an item on one of your slides that pointed out the differential in growth in the last 10 years, 30% versus a point and a half. Uh, and, and so perhaps undersizing the urban districts initially uh, will allow them over time to catch up. Again, that point of not just developing boundaries or planning for today, but really looking at what should it look like in, in maybe years five to eight uh, of the life cycle uh, really would be helpful. So perhaps undersizing them by four or five percent, I don't have a specific number in mind, but, but looking at that issue and, and allowing for the natural growth that will occur in the urban environment uh, to catch up and, and at the end of that process have well balanced this just seems like a, a useful exercise in our opinion. So those would be the three criteria that we would suggest tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> That's all I have on the list here. Have any more signed up to speak? No more. Okay. Anyone else who's here would like to speak at this time?
comments, any questions at all on it? The city was also looking for a way to provide for the growth. Uh, we just didn't think about it as clearly, perhaps, as Mr. Morris did. But we were looking for there to be less deviation at the end of the 10-year decade period. So you would, you, would be, now. You, you wouldn't have a problem with that? Then. No. We, something like that would seem to be in keeping with what our ultimate goal was, was which is to not have the large variation at the end of the 10 years. Good. There we go. Okay, let's call the meeting to order tonight. I'm going to introduce our committee members here. We have Philip Burdett down on the end. And next is Stephen Peck, Mary Lou Burberry. I'm Dick Eckhoff. Uh, we've got Earl Mann. And Steve and uh, Newell Brinkhurst, and let's see. Then we have Mike Carley and John Hobbs. 
And hiding over here, we have Mike Watson. Uh, these are, there's two members from each of the districts in the county, plus one at large, to give representation from throughout the area. But the real representation is coming out of these meetings. It's not just that we're from five different districts, but we want to hear the individual residents of those five different districts. And so that's why we've called these meetings and brought everybody in here tonight. Uh, this is the final of a three series, three meeting series, at which we are looking for information, what you feel should be the criteria, not the boundaries at this point, but the criteria for selecting those boundaries. That input will be used by this committee to develop a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors who will then meet to rule on what they, or to establish what the criteria will be based on this input. And then there will be another series of meetings, one held in each district, at which time we'll actually discuss the boundaries. So at that, at that point I'd like to bring up a PowerPoint. <coughs> See, I may have to lay down to see all this. You know, <laughs> it might be easier. You know, we want to welcome everybody for coming tonight. Um, it's very important that we get this input from each and every person. Written comments may also be submitted here tonight on the website, in person at the board chambers in Visalia or by mail. Any written comments will be added to the website and will be given just as much weight and discussion as personal comments here tonight. We're going to review which issues were previously considered to draw the current county boundaries. And we're going to learn from you which issues should be considered for this year's round. And we want to comply with those recommendations to the greatest extent possible. In phase one, we're selecting criteria. We're reviewing existing criteria. We, this, like I said, this is the third of the three meetings. The other two were done by Nuba and Visalia. And we're going to review this comments and then make the recommendation to the board. And after they have adopted criteria, we'll use this in phase two to develop several boundary alternatives. We'll host the five outreach meetings during June, one in each district. We'll review and revise the boundary alternative based on the input from those meetings and make recommendations to the Board of Supervisors by mid-July. Now the U.S. Census information is available. Tulare County had 442,000 plus residents in the 2010 count, which works out to 88,436 per district. Now, that's an increase of 20.2 percent over the 2000 census. Current districts had 73,604 residents in the 2000 census. And you notice cities have grown 32 percent, while rural areas have grown only 1.5. So changes will most likely be needed. In addition to the population count, data will be available to distinguish that population by voting age and ethnicity. That will be available in mid-May. And then, like I say, the additional outreach meetings will be scheduled for community input on where to actually draw the lines under phase two. Now we have certain mandatory criteria that we have to follow. These are the ones established by law. Districts must have equal populations, as much as possible, with as little variance as possible. Now some court cases have approved up to 10%, but the county is aiming for a much smaller variance than that. Compliance with the Federal Voting Rights Act. We cannot design districts to dilute the voting power of a minority population. And districts should be designed to reflect the ethnic makeup of the voting age population. Those are the ones that we are required to follow, the county is required to follow. Then there's a lot of optionals, some that have been used. Topography, considering major boundaries, mountains, rivers, roads, that kind of thing. Geography, other jurisdictional boundaries, city limits, community limits, um, water school districts, state lines, whatever. And continuity and compactness. Communities in the same district should border each other, be close together. For instance, Lindsay Strathmore, Cutler Rossi. Community of interest. Communities or neighborhoods with similar interests, history, social relationships, ag versus industrial, water sources, flood areas, etc., age demographics. These are all important items. Uh, the question is how important, and that's what we're asking you people. 
Local optional criteria can be things like avoiding dividing cities, protecting the integrity of rural towns and communities, urban growth areas, facilitate access of constituents to their supervisors, and avoid splitting election precincts where possible. Uh, this comes into where each precinct has to have its own ballot, and you get so many crisscrossing boundaries you could wind up with one person in one precinct and they have to print ballots for that one person, or for that one well as the case may be. Finally, we have the contact information here, uh, redistricting website, the board chamber's address, and uh, emails for the redistricting staff and phone numbers. Uh, it's in these handouts that we gave you here. Like I say, if you have additional information, you think of something you missed tonight, you want to expand on it, go beyond the time. Uh, maybe you've got friends or relatives who are interested in putting in their input. Uh, this is a chance to get more in there. We will begin next Tuesday night putting all this information together. So if you have something between now and then, please send it on in and we'll take a look at it. Next Thursday. Dick, it's next Thursday, not Tuesday. Huh? Don't we have a meeting next Thursday? Uh, no, it's next week, Tuesday. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to open our hearing here in a minute. This is a public hearing to receive input from the residents of Tulare County regarding the criteria to be used to determine new district lines in Tulare County. At this time, comments are to be restricted to the subject of the hearing. The committee is not prepared to take testimony at this time on the existing or proposed boundary locations. This will be discussed at the second series of meetings to be held in the districts. It is not appropriate for this committee to receive comments on any other county business. Although committee members may ask the speakers questions to clarify their statements, we are not prepared at this time to discuss or to act on any matters presented here. To give as many people as possible an opportunity to address the committee, please restrict your comments to the subject and be brief as possible. All comments are being recorded, and at the conclusion of all three outreach meetings, the committee will review all public comments and ultimately make a, res a recommendation to the board on which criteria should be used. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, all persons addressing the committee will be limited to a maximum of three minutes, with a total of 90 minutes allotted for the public hearing. Direct all comments to the chair. Please wait to be recognized before speaking, and do not interrupt other speakers. We ask that you state your name and address for the record. We have translating equipment available. If anybody needs it, contact at the back two tables there, and they'll get you set up on it. And at this time, we'd like to please turn off all pagers and cell phones or place in the silent mode. Do we have anybody list on the list that wishes to speak? Okay. Now I'll open it to comments from the floor. Anybody here who has some questions, comments, ideas about the criteria? We have a microphone right up here. Come on up. Uh, state your name and address for the record, and it was what you'd like to tell us. What are we supposed to make a comment on? I'm, I'm looking through the criteria, the mandatory criteria. Are we supposed to say to me which ones you should follow? Or I have no idea what to make a comment on. Okay, the mandatory criteria is mandated by law. We have to follow that. Those are the primary things that we look at. The population equality and the minority blend. In addition to that, all those other items are optional. We can use them, or we, we may not use them. And what we're asking is, how do you feel about them? Do you feel some of these should definitely be in? Do you feel some of them are a waste? Or do you think of, can you think of some other ideas that may be more important? It, just in general, what do you think we should use as a criteria for determining whether, where these lines should be drawn? So we just addressed the optional, what about the data, just, we don't comment on that? 
on what? The data. Yeah, the data. Uh, no, the data is just what we has been worked up through the census that we have to work with. So we're here to make comments on the option. Okay, I got to study him a little bit. What was your name, your name sir? Art Samora. Did you spell your last name? S A M O R A. Anyone else? Elva? Hi, my name is Elva Beltran. I'm a very visual learner, so what I wanted to see was a map, but there's nothing. So in my head, I'm thinking there's nothing for me to work with. Okay. There... I'd, love, I'd love to be a part of this and put my, have my input in there, uh, but I'm very visual, like a lot of people are. And I would have liked to ask you to map. That's my comment for right now. Thank you. Okay, there are maps on the website where you can look up and see what they presently are. And like I said, we're not really at the point right now where we're trying to decide what the lines okay. should be. Yeah, we're looking more, and so that's why we didn't really set up any maps or anything for part of the display. But you can pull them up on the website and see, and that will be quite important when we actually get into the next round of making the actual boundaries. Anyone else any questions or comments? Tracy. Grace Munoz Rios and um, just a point of clarification now what we're doing here is just Tulare County right so some other entity is going to be doing like the um, congressional and the senatorial districts that encompass larger areas will that be something that we will have uh, ability to speak on at a later date do you happen to know that yeah there was a meet in the meeting in Hanford last week was it or two weeks ago, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, for exactly this purpose, and uh, Pierre, do you know any of the schedules of those meetings? Where else they're going to be? Or are they pretty much moved through this area? Within just Tulare County, um, is this going to to possibly um, produce additional uh, district representation? Say you have seven, then you get because of the population, you're going to get eight. It won't add any additional. No, uh, It'll just we're, we're locked in. We're locked right. in on five for the county, mm -hmm. and all it has, all it will do is redivide it so that those districts will remain as even as possible. Like I said, 88,000 or something is what we're looking for. Right, so they're, they're, they're each uh, representative's area will be more, a little bit better defined based on the new data. Yeah, yeah, each, each supervisor is gonna pick up a few thousand people and then like I say, try to get it as equal as we can so no one supervisor is representing more than, than his share so that everybody is equally represented. Okay, thank you. Fred Beltran. Uh, my question is, uh, of course, I, I like all the criteria. I mean, I, I think even the optional criteria you have, uh, as much as possible, I'd like to see all that used, and I'm sure you will use it. Um, I have one question, and, and actually my wife asked, and I, I'm not really sure because I see here that federal or state lands. Uh, is the, uh, the reservation covered under, under this? 
the area is certainly covered, how the treaties and so on work between them as a sovereign nation and stuff, I don't really know. But the area itself would be covered. As far as I know, they do vote on this, don't they, in, in, in these elections. So yes, they, as individuals, they would be covered as well, yes. You left your understanding, but you're not real sure. No. Oh, well. That is important, I think. That's a pretty good population up there. I'd like to make sure that they are getting represented. And of course, like you say, the, whatever the treaties and whatnot are, but uh, I suppose at some point in time I'd like to get an answer to that for sure. Oh, I, I just assumed they did. They get counted, sure. Is there a voting poll up there? I guess I would tell you if they if there's a voting poll up there in the reservation for the fifth, you know, for for uh, district voting. Any voting, yeah. They they do it by mail. Okay, maybe that's. Okay, well that was my question because I saw this as a. Uh, federal lands and state lands, whether they were covered in that, and I was just curious about the reservation. Thank you. Yeah, we can follow up if they've got a polling station up there, then that almost says that they are covered. Yeah. Well, I think like my wife says, I think what they actually do is, is ballot voting. They don't actually have a polling place. I think they, they vote by mail. But I... What uh, happened the uh, presidential election? But, uh, and we made phone calls. But that's federally. So would it, yeah, that I, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're also voting in in district in, in the county district. Uh, so okay, thank you. Right, it's something we can certainly follow up on because it would make a difference, you know, just how they're handled. But I know there's there is a lot of overlapping when it comes to reservations and stuff as to uh, state and area laws versus the the tribal laws and stuff. So. That, you know, they're, they're not a totally independent nation. They're, there's... Yeah, it's not, it's not marked out on the maps as far as the district separate, so... Uh, but we will follow up on that. Any other questions or comments? More. Uh, all the other criteria seem fine to me, but I need clarification on the age demographics. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to look at old and young and middle age, or what? How are you going to do that? It seems like an impossible task. <clears throat> well, I haven't seen the data yet, so I don't know how much of a breakdown it is, whether it's uh, every 10 years or 20 years or what, but it is data that will be come in and be available, and it's a question as to whether we want to overlay that on there or not. The original overlay will be even uh, districts, and then that's going to be treated directly again by making sure they follow Title 42 and the, and the voting requirements. After that, it's whatever the county decides to lay on there, whether they want to do uh, try to divide it up by age groups or or combine it by age groups or what. Again, that comes back to what the people in these meetings tell us they want to see on there. If you want to see age as, if you feel that the age of the people is important deciding that they should be, <coughs> that they should be divided up into separate age groups or that they should be grouped as uh, combined or whatever, you know, that that's, Whatever the public thinks, we'll, we'll add that on. We'll send it to the, the county board of supervisors. Well, I think you, uh, I don't know, it seems like a strange criteria to me. That's my comment. Uh, you know, it, it, can be, it could be strange if somebody wanted to have all Chevy dealers divided up. I don't know. <laughs> Come. I think part of that is if you have a large area of population that's younger, like school age children or whatever, I mean, families that have lots of children, obviously those children don't get to vote if they're under 18. It's part of that demographic of age. You know what I'm saying? Right, you could have a, a small amount of families.
counties that are large counties that have a lot of children, but the representation you want to equalize because yeah, it's not so much grouping yeah. older people against the younger people. It's, yeah. it's voting age. Well, yeah, that makes more sense. Thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of it too is a matter of what interests people have at different ages. You know, young families may want ball diamonds and racetracks and stuff. And uh, a group in their 70s and 80s might be looking more for um, places to come in like here and, and sit and relax and stuff. So they, they've got <clears throat> different ideas of what they want and feel. So I think that's why they're questioning what we should do with it. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? signing in or so I'm going to wait just a minute. comment period right now. So if you have any questions or comments uh, about the criteria. Yeah. I have a comment. Well, first of all, I'm glad that we're having this. this Could you give like, your name and address for the record? Sorry. Yes, my name is Teresa. My name is Teresa de la Rosa. I live at 450 West Alice Avenue, Porterville, California. Okay. I'm glad we're having this um, meeting, I think it is very necessary. I'm sorry that people are not, not as many people as we would like to see to be here, but this is such a foreign subject for many people, you know? We only go through this every 10 years, and sometimes we don't really know what we're supposed to do. Um, the only thing that I would really like to emphasize is that you really take in consideration the community interest. I know we're not supposed to be talking about boundaries at this meeting, but I think you really have to look at every community that is in, at least in my view, District 5. I'm very interested, interested in seeing that we are in this district together, but <coughs> something that is important to all of us. What is that? I'm not sure. But I really know that you are the experts, because you're here as a commission, so I'm sure that you have some guidelines to follow. So, you know, taking consideration that we have different segments of community in Porterville versus Springville or other areas that belong to, the, uh, to District 5. Um, perhaps we have more in common with Tarabella, to a certain extent. So, again, um, I'd like to see more meetings. I know you have a deadline to meet, and I don't know that you really have the time, but it's important that, again, you look at each community that belongs to my district, which is District 5, and come up with a boundary, even though, like I said, you're not supposed to be talking about boundaries, that it is important to all of us. So, I don't know what else I can tell you, other than I hope you come back with a good plan. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think you're, you're stepping off into the other side, oh, when we say we're not talking about boundaries, that means we're not talking about setting the boundaries, but obviously, we are talking about what involves where a boundary should be, and I think that's, that's exactly what you're saying there. As I understand you, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I've got this right, you're talking about uh, having cohesion between the community. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's exactly the information we're looking for, is, is your beginning. Thank you. Elva Beltran again. 
I'm looking at the local optional criteria. I'm looking at the facilitate access of constituents to their supervisors. I live in the Tarabella area, and about a month ago, statistics came out from the EDD regarding unemployment. Tarabella, where they got the figure, I don't know, but I'll go with it. 43%. 43% of a population of, I think it's almost 3,500. And I wonder, where was Mr. Mike Ennis? to help out these families. Probably most of them were farm workers. And I wonder how many of those farm workers are going to go knock on his door. They probably won't. But I myself, I see that. And I wonder, where was he? To do what Mendota has done and bring in food for those that need it. So I really wish that something could happen when we redraw the lines or whatever, that uh, a supervisor will really reach out to those that won't go knock on his door and be a voice for them and help them. I do a lot of charity work for Port of Love, Inc. and Salvation Army, and every day we see people from all walks of life, educated and uneducated, but we're there to help and serve Fred Beltran again. Uh, the the uh, the criteria being used here for the district uh, is that based on population only, right? And it has nothing to do with residency, legally legal residents, or has nothing to do with that. So even though you're a legal illegal resident here in the United States, if you were counted you should be represented, right? Even though you don't have the ability to vote. Hang on a second. Uh, Barbara, can you? That's, that's the way the census works. Right. It's based strictly on residence, correct? Physical presence. Right. Physical presence, yeah. If you're, if you're here, you get counted. Right. Whether, whether you vote or don't vote or whether you're here legally or not. Whether, whether you're legal, right. legal okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to be clear on that because I want to make sure that, as my wife said, we live in Terrebelle and there is a, a big population there, the Hispanics and probably undocumented, and want to make sure that they are, they're getting represented, they're being... If they got counted, they're in there. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's a whole nother bag of worms, yeah, whether you got counted or not, but... But, um, so they, they think California got under-counted, but, you know, to the extent that they got counted, yes, they, they are, those numbers are doing it while they're working with Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Barbara. I'm pretty sure, but I, I knew you'd have a better uh, line on it than I did. Anybody else, please? Hi, my name is Monique Yang. I live here in Portville. Could you spell your name, please? Uh, Monique, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E. Last name Yang, Y-A-N-G. Uh, I was, you know, I am new to this too, just like the lady uh, had mentioned earlier, this is foreign to me also. And I wouldn't know about, you know, these meetings happening, um, uh, not until Grace Munoz, uh, we, I bumped her into her at a, at, at a bank, and she told me about this meeting. And, you know, I thought about all the, you know, um, you know families in here that, you know, uh, would would like to come to meetings like this and you know um, know what's going on but i was looking at all the options the uh, optional criteria and i'm thinking you know all those uh, options are good but you know when would we know um, that all the options or the how would i say the final draft that you guys come up with that 
which one are taken out and which one are used? Is there like a timeline that can we check at the website and find out? Yes, you'll be able to follow it on the website. Like I say, we start next Tuesday night assembling all the information and we'll present it to the board within the next week or so. And what day is it scheduled to go to board for? Okay, be within the next two weeks, probably two to three weeks at the at the latest. So after that time, we we are not uh, allowed to do to make any input anymore, or oh yeah, still, okay. yes. After that time, once the criteria has been established by the board, we'll start putting together a proposal of where the line should be, and we will come back out at that time. <clears throat> and this time, we'll make five meetings, one in each district to discuss the actual location of the lines. This is, this is the, the criteria, the politics behind how you decide. But at that time, we'll actually be talking about putting lines on the ground. Mm -hmm. And we'll be looking for everybody's input at that time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions at this time? By all means. I'm sorry that I was late, and I'm sorry that I was not able to to read the literature that you provided us. Um, you do have a current criteria according to this uh, this information, correct? The criteria was established ten years ago. Right. Um, we're looking at that. But as of right this moment, technically no, there is no criteria for this 2010 ground. Other than the fact that we do have to use the two mandatory ones, the equal division and the voting act rights. So technically no, there is no established criteria at this time. That's what the county's going to do after we bring in a recommendation. Other than the mandatory criteria, which is that you have to meet in terms of, for instance, the federal voting rights, there are certain certain criteria that by law you have to meet, correct? Those first two items, yes, we have to. Okay. And the rest is just going to be based on whatever information you receive from us and whatever information or whatever criteria you must follow as to the, how you're going to be dealing with information.